morning. I hope you're doing well today. This morning I got up early and I went outside to have my cup of coffee watching the birds. It was a beautiful morning here in New England. And watching the birds is something that most of you know I enjoy doing. But I also um, love watching the animals interact with each other. It's extremely entertaining and you can learn a lot from them. Nature always teaches me lessons. Every time um, I'm out and about, I come back with something. Today, I had you know some things I had to do, and you know I was outside. I was going to drink my coffee quick, and I was going to go 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 all day long. And I watched the birds, and you know it just like made me just take a deep breath and relax. And I looked at the birds. I said, you know what? These birds are in the now. They're right here in the moment. They're just worrying about coming to my bird feeder and eating. This is an extremely exciting time of year. The birds have all migrated back here to Massachusetts. Uh, over the last month or so, the male birds have been singing their hearts out at the top of their treetops and they've attracted a mate. They may have already bred. They've laid their eggs and build their nest, etc. And they're now in the moment. Right now, we are sitting on our eggs. Right now, we need to go out and collect food for our babies. The migratory birds are not worrying about, oh, I have to migrate back in four months to Costa Rica or wherever it is that they have to migrate back to. Right now, it's May and it's Massachusetts, and this is where they are, and this is what they're thinking about. So I really needed that lesson today from the birds just to stay in the now because I myself and a lot of us tend to get ahead of ourselves thinking, oh, I have to do this, I got to do that, and we're not enjoying the moment that we're in. Grant you, there are certain times that we do have to plan ahead, you know, say, you know, even for fun things, you're going on a trip, you have to plan that. You have to have surgery, you have to plan ahead for that. Your children may need this, that, or the other thing. That's different. It's just like the day-to-day -day trivial things that we have to do. So I came out of you know my cup of coffee lesson this morning watching the birds with, I need to really start focusing on now versus worrying about what I'm going to be doing tomorrow or next week or next month or even, you know, all that particular day. Watching the birds in the now was was quite entertaining this morning. Um, for example, the house sparrows. They were at my feeders and they like to bicker and they'll like peck at each other and pull feathers and usually the, well not usually, always the dominant one gets that particular feeder. Even though I have like 20 feeders in my yard, they'll all decide to go to a particular one. And the one that's the loudest and the strongest wins in wildlife. So the other birds will fly off. So if Sally and Sammy Sparrow were fighting, Sally may fly off and she go, might go to another feeder in my yard or might go to my neighbor's yard. So now she's found more food. There may be other sparrows around, but she's not going to stop and say, hey, you should see Sammy. He's over there thinking he rules the the neighborhood and he took all the feed. She now is happy. She's now found more seeds and she's doing her thing. Just like the other sparrows. You know, they they don't care what went on in my yard with between those two. They're getting seeds for themselves. Watching robins is quite interesting. Um, when one robin, say rockin' robin, comes to the yard and finds a worm, and it may have had to battle with that worm for a couple minutes pulling it out of the ground, well, Randy Robin may decide to come swooping right in and it grabs the worm from Rockin' Robin and for a split second, uh, Rockin' Robin, I'm sure, is not at all happy. And sometimes it may chase after the other Robin, but then realizes, well, it's taken my worm. So I have two choices. I can waste my energy chasing it or I can go back and find another worm or if it didn't chase it away, it could sit there and sulk for a while. In the meantime, it's wasting time that it needs to collect worms to go feed its young. So you can just in a few matter of a few minutes, you know, I see all this interaction going on. The hawk 
um, I call her, well, the, I don't know if it's a male or female, but I, I have one that I call Harry and Harriet Hawk that comes swooping through my yard, and they were after, one of them was after uh, Molly the Mockingbird, and Molly was able to get away, so for that particular moment of now, Molly the Mockingbird was probably terrified for her life, and Harry or Harriet the Hawk you know, out of that moment was discouraged. I didn't get a meal for my babies and they have to put a lot of energy into, um, you know, when they swoop down after something. So the hawk will land in a tree. You'll oftentimes see it um, ruffle up its feathers. It regains its composure and then it goes off again. Molly could sit there for an hour saying, oh my gosh, I almost was killed. I can't believe this. It's Molly's like, hey, you know, I'm fine. I'm going to go back to my nest, check on my babies and feed them. And the hawk now is off in pursuit of another bird. They don't have time to just sit around and um, feel sorry for themselves. They know that they have a mission that right at this moment, I need to get something to eat for my babies, something to eat for myself. And that's what they do all day long. There's always something to learn watching nature. When I'm having a particular difficult day, I always go out to my favorite tree. And I've shown you guys in a couple of my videos my favorite tree. And I'll either hug it or I'll sit with my back against it. And when I'm by the tree, I can feel its energy. I can feel this tree is strong, it's rooted, it's grounded. Um, it, maybe a windy day and the tree is swaying in the wind, but the tree is not worried about last winter's snowstorm when it could have almost got cracked, like a lot of trees cracked. It's not worrying about could we have a big storm this summer and it could lose limbs or, or break. Nope. The tree is in the moment right now. It's a nice gentle breeze today and the tree is just dancing in the wind and enjoying itself. So I go to that tree to take in its positive, happy energy. I'll go there either with my mala beads, my rosary beads, sometimes I'll bring my drum, my flute, sometimes I'll do om, sometimes I'll cry, sometimes I'll just talk to the tree, and while I'm doing whatever it is that I'm doing, I'm just picking up the vibration from the tree, and it just fills me up, and I walk away from it feeling so happy. So nature really can teach us so much. We just have to take the time to, you know, slow down and observe what's going on around us. I can go on the same trail on when I enter the fairy forest, I, you know, I do it every single day, and it may be the same exact trail, but it's not, I don't see the same exact thing every time I'm on the trail. You know, if I take a morning walk, I may see the morning dew. Um, it may have just rained, and there's just rain pitter-pattering off the, the leaves. I may see a frog, or an animal, or a bird, or a fresh flower coming up, or a pine cone, whatever it is. There's always something different, and I, I think about the animal that was there, and that, you know, that animal enjoys this trail as much as I do, and we are both using this trail system and it's just a wonderful feeling and I, I you know I have to again tell myself stay in the now um, often because um, I have a tendency of letting you know getting carried away or something um, worrying about stuff and um, these lessons really do help me my doctor wants me to go for walks every day which I do anyways um, the type of walks um, that my doctors are talking about is you know, a fast-paced walk, not my leisurely um, walks in nature of you know taking videos and pictures, but even on my fast-paced walk when I'm trying to get my heart rate up, I still am taking in all that's around me. And to me, there's no better place to do it than in the forest. Yes, you have to be careful that you don't trip over you know a tree branch or whatever, but um, it's where I like to be. And I have friends that their doctors have you know, also suggested, you know, go for a 20, 30 minute walk a day, and they're like, oh, it's so 
boring walking down the street. And I'm like, well, I don't like to walk down streets personally. I don't you know, enjoy cars whizzing by me. And rather, so, you know, I suggested to them, I said, why don't you go, you know, go someplace where there's a trail system that you can walk on that you feel comfortable. And, you know, shut off your phone. It's definitely bring your phone with you, you know, because you never know whether you're a man or a woman, you know, you could fall down and you need emergency help or whatever. But shut it off, you know, just nothing's worse than going for a walk and then have your cell phone ring and you're like right at that moment just like taking in this beautiful butterfly that's fluttering on a flower and now the phone just rang and it just you know stopped you from having that special moment that won't ever happen again you may see a butterfly somewhere else but just that particular moment will never happen again so my phone is off in my pocket. I do not bring my iPod with me. I don't need music because the forest provides me with music. Um, oh my goodness, I mean, in the first thing in the morning, just listening to the birds singing and um, you know, when, the, when the frogs in the springtime are waking up. I mean, it is just amazing. There isn't you know, anything that can replace the magical sounds that you hear in the forest. Um, so if you have a chance to get outside and um, be with nature, try to do it daily if you can. I know some, it's difficult for some people. They, they can't get out to a forest or, um, or woodlands. Or maybe they, you know, some people write to me that they don't have any place close by. Well, try even your local park. Um, you know, um, even a school playground. I mean, there's trees all around. It. Just you know, walk walk around uh, and just be outside try to be one with nature and the other thing that I always come out of with nature is this bird doesn't care what that bird thinks about them because they're too busy trying to survive so say somebody has recently hurt your feelings or maybe you had a dispute with a friend or something you know just go outside and just I talk to the birds sometimes you know and it makes me feel good because I know that the birds, you know, that robin that took the, the worm from the other robin, the other one's already forgotten about it because it's just already collected another worm and it's too busy with its baby. So it just helps me to, you know, say, you know what, we all have difficult days and, um, you know, what someone thinks of you, sometimes you, you can't help it, you know, uh, they can think what they want. Just like... For instance, um, you can't control like the hawk coming after another bird. The bird can't control if the hawk catches it. Just like we can't control what someone may say about us or whatever. So just, you know, it, it's just trivial things that I'm, I'm guilty of doing it. I let it get the best of me sometimes. And animals have taught me that, you know what, this is just a little bleep on the radar scale. You know, it's... You're making a mountain out of a molehill. Just let it go. If you know that you're a good person, then just tell yourself, hey, you know what, I'm a good person, and that's all that matters. And just go about your day. And seriously, by watching nature, you'll get all these lessons for free. But if I can do it by taking nature walks, holding my crystal in my pocket, feeling connected to the earth, laying on the grass, holding a leaf, watching the birds if that's what helps me then you know it's free there it's out there for everybody anybody can do it doesn't matter where you live i can get different experiences from different places when i'm having um a difficult time i'll have my husband bring me to the ocean on the weekends and that helped a lot when my son was away on certain military um, missions. Because when I'm at the ocean, I always feel like when the waves come in, I feel like they wash over me. And then it just like takes whatever is stressing me out. And it just takes it away. And the ocean's so powerful that whatever I'm feeling is not going to affect the ocean. The ocean's strong and it's helping me. And so I come back from the ocean feeling completely different than I can come back from the fairy forest. And it doesn't matter where you live. You know, whether you live in a city, you're out in the prairie or farmland, you know, 
in the mountains, it's wherever you live, there is nature everywhere. Before I made this video, I was outside and I saw an ant and it entertained me for about 20 minutes. It was just a regular size ant and it found a dead beetle. And I'm watching this little tiny ant drag this beetle back to the ant colony. And the ant colony, you know, was like halfway across my yard. And that little ant was pulling it right along and it you know, who knows what, what, what I was thinking. I mean, all I can imagine is he was thinking, I'm going to bring this food back to feed the rest of the ants. And nothing was going to stop him. He was on a mission. Here I am now. I got this beetle, and I'm bringing it back. And when he entered the hole, when I knew that he'd gone back into the ant colony, um, I let me you know my imagination. Um, <laughs> I have fun with things like this. I'm like, everyone's like, yay, Andy the Ant just brought us dinner, you know, and we have this delicious beetle to eat. So, um, that's just, uh, silly me. But anyways, I hope you all have a chance to connect with nature. If you can't get it outside, um, then, then just sit by your window and, and watch. And, um, there's just so much to look at. The way the sun is reflecting through the tree, the way the grass is blowing, when the dandelions turn to seeds, it, to me, they're little fairies flying around the yard, and um, you'd be surprised, you know, just you shut off the TV, shut off the telephone, and just, just spend that time, and you will come out of it feeling so much better. I, knew, I know I do, and um, I hope that you do as well. So I'm going to, um, this is being recorded on my iPod, so I don't know what the clarity is. I'm about ready to head out to go drumming tonight. So I won't be able to upload this till tomorrow. So I'm going, um, looking forward to drumming. So I hope you guys have a great day. And I'd love to hear a VR about your connection with nature. Uh, it, would, it would mean a lot to me if you feel like doing it. If not, just uh, leave me a comment. And we hope you have a great day. Love to you all. Bye-bye.